fuel from Pennsylvania. Okay, I want to move on to uh, wind energy, and we're joined by David Connolly of the Irish Wind Energy Association. Uh, I suppose people would, would say there's lots of advantages to wind. There's one big disadvantage, of course. It's not very regular. It's not very predictable. No, it's not, but our power system is evolving rapidly, and as Rodney said, Airgrid are very much up for the challenge of, of taking it on board. And I think the one unique p position that wind energy has right now is a lot of our conversation is about how Ireland isn't doing enough, but with onshore wind, Ireland is number two in the world for what we're delivering in terms of onshore wind onto our power system, with only one country ahead of us. We feel that we, we're, we're saving more carbon emissions with wind energy right now than every other form of renewable energy combined in Ireland. So wind energy is one of the areas we can say we're doing a really good job. In the Minister's Climate Action Plan, as Rodney has alluded to, there's an attempt to go from a third of our electricity from renewables today to 70%. Wind energy will be the vast majority of that. And the amount of carbon emissions that wind energy will save in this Climate Action Plan is about half of the entire carbon emissions that are going to be saved. So wind energy is okay. very much central to this solution okay. over the next 10 I years. I suspect Paula Byrne behind you from Wind Aware Ireland is going to disagree with everything you've just said. Um, yeah, uh, thanks very much. Um, wind Aware Ireland represents over 50 community groups in 22 counties and practically every wind project is being opposed by communities now for very good reason. We know that if we allow these massive industrial wind turbines be forced upon us, that our precious landscape will be destroyed. We know there are environmental impacts. We know that people will suffer from noise and infrasound. And for some families, they'll have to abandon their homes. And we also know that we are subsidizing this wealthy industry to the tune of billions. Now, if the wind were providing a meaningful solution to climate change, you could, uh, you could argue that those uh, um, impacts are justifiable. But wind is actually saving about 4% of our overall CO2 emissions. And if you take Philip Boucher Hayes' new figures there, it's even less than that. And you have to ask, why are we not sitting here discussing the abject failure of wind energy? Instead, we're proposing to do more of the same. Okay, I'll, I'll just let Dave back in. As I said, wind energy is saving more carbon than every other form of renewables combined in Ireland. So we 4%. are absolutely contributing. We not only believe we're the cleanest, over the next decade we believe we can be the cheapest form of electricity production. If you look at the prices other countries are achieving through the auctions that the Minister describes, it's less than the price of electricity. But you want, a big, uh, you want a big subsidy for no, offshore? Exactly. Don't we want some stability, not a subsidy. So we want price certainty, not a price lean-up. And we believe we can do it cheaper than what fossil fuels are doing today. The research evidence shows that to date, you, everybody pays in your bill a public service obligation to subsidise wind, but the research shows that the cost of electricity has come down by more than the mm. subsidy. So actually, wind has saved us money and reduced carbon. And we're talking about uh, dramatically increasing it up to 70%. Now, to do so, one of the big announcements in the last two months was the electricity interconnector to France, because if the wind doesn't blow, you won't be able to import electricity. When it does blow and you can't use it because you're, we'll have too much, um, we won't be able to absorb it all when the wind blows. You want to be able to export it. I think we need to look at possibly going further. And the huge EU... It's, we're getting this interconnector at a remarkably good price due to the EU support. But we, we, I definitely think that the one where we're going to make it, it probably meet our targets is in the electricity area. Do, will offshore need a big subsidy, though? No, I certainly talked to one company whose concern, I thought he was going to lobby for a subsidy. All sorts of people come and talk to you wanting to lobby for this and lobby for that. Uh, Minister, you'd know about it. I shouldn't have to, but uh, I do. But actually, what he said was, if there was enough interconnection between Ireland and Britain, he would build, a, a, with no subsidy, a very substantial offshore wind. Let me bring one of our younger citizens back.